Hello! It's been a really long time since I've made a video. If you're new here and you don't know who I am or why I am in your subscription feed, there's a very good chance you found me because of Taylor. It's Radish Time. She's wonderful. I was in a video on her channel earlier this year that I will link in a card or in the description or something. If you are new here, this video is going to be a very weird place to start. And in my head, I'm gonna pretend that you're just, I don't know, you're not there. I'm not sure. I made a video a long time ago about context collapse in which I said that I like tend to think of this as talking to my friends. I also, I didn't say this in the video, but I do also often think about it as talking to myself, talking to some future version of myself. And I think that is how I'm gonna have to think about this right now, maybe a little bit, my friends. Future version of myself, it's like my big sister self <laughs> and, and my friends. This video is gonna be about mental health stuff and it is my third attempt at recording this video in part because I haven't scripted it or taken any sort of notes and so I'm having a very hard time forming complete and coherent sentences but I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go with it now. I have, I've set that expectation at the top <laughs> that I'm only half sure what I'm, where I'm going and so we're, we're leading with that, okay? This, me doing this thing was prompted by, honestly, it was prompted by a handful of things. Um, I guess the concise version, the simple version, what I wanna say is that my mental health is not great and it's been pretty bad for a while now. And, you know, it it's a struggle. And that's honestly like the whole point. That's really the whole thing that I'm trying to say right now is, is that, right? I think that it is very important for me like for me uh, on a personal level for me and for my mental health that I am more open about it that I like find occasions to talk about it just as somebody who like conducts so much of my life online I forget sometimes like that there are people who don't be just because I'm so surrounded by people who do but I am one of the people who is fucking saying all of my thoughts on the internet and I have been, you know, keeping personal blogs for ever. I had my first like internet diary when I was like 11 maybe, I don't know. So I've been living, I've been sharing my feelings on the internet for a very long time. And maybe there's a separate conversation to be had about whether that's a good thing. It is though, it is a good thing for me to be talking about my mental health openly. Uh, oh, I'm like very uncomfortable right now, <laughs> uh, but it, it's good, it's good because I think that it is productive for me to kind of externalize it in this way, to, to take it out of my head, to not, I, I, I'm a very introverted person. I do a lot of processing by myself. I have to like do a fair amount of internal processing before I really have, I don't know, concrete thoughts to share with anybody. But I think that when I am unwell, there are some obvious problems that result from that. And so being able to say, like, here's the thread, like in the, the sort of sea of random, like bad thoughts to like to pluck out some like specific ones, like, okay, no, 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 here's like the very important like thing that you need to wrestle with. Um, <laughs> I'm sad all the time. <laughs> That's a thing. Like, uh, let's start there and like put it, take it out of your head and like that's very helpful. I have also found it very helpful and productive because every time I do talk about it, there are always people who are like, yeah, same. And like that is genuinely very helpful. I, I don't know what it is exactly about that. It, it, it makes it less isolating. I do know exactly what it is. That's the thing. I think both the value from externalizing it and like not being isolating, both of those things are about making it feel like more real. Like it's real in the world and not just real in my head. And I don't entirely know what the meaningful difference is there because I think like, I don't know, the fact that it's real in my head, it, whatever. So that's like the thing that I get out of it. The hardest thing about talking about my mental health openly in this way is that I don't get to decide how you will respond, which is like literally always true. I, I never get to decide how you will respond, but it, that is a much bigger problem when it comes to talking about mental health stuff than it is, for example, you know, when I'm sharing all of my feelings about a TV show or a movie or whatever we're doing on Snark Squad. Because the thing is that the words that I choose to use are like the sole extent of how I can convey this thing to you. And even as I'm trying to form those words, I know that they are inadequate. Like they are not 
there like there's still so much missing there is so much that I don't really have words for or just like in general there there are not enough words there's not enough time I cannot get like uh, trying to distill it down and so there's this whole range of responses that leave this feeling of like no you still don't get it like you still don't get what I'm trying to say and I like the idea I've, I've spent myself trying to say it in the first place and so I cannot even begin to try to explain it any further I think the goal ultimately is like feeling a little bit more understood and finding other people who like relate and get it being able to I don't know commiserate with people is helpful. <laughs> it is so hard to find the right words to distill the thing down. Like there aren't, there aren't. The right words don't exist. I, I don't know. I, <laughs> or if they do, I certainly haven't found them. I have found versions of them in the way that other people talk about their mental health. I have often found it very, very useful to hear the way that other people attempt to externalize and make known this this thing that is not really knowable to anybody other than the person who's actually living inside of it. I have found a lot of utility in that, both for all the ways that someone uses words that do reflect my experience and for the ways that it doesn't. I think that there is just a lot of value in seeing like, yeah, like that's, I see you over there. Uh, you're you're kind of, you're down here with me, but you're like over there in that corner. I don't know. Last night I went to go lay down and I was in bed for a couple minutes before I just like started crying and I lurked out I had to get up I left the room so I could go cry but then uh, my partner got up anyway he heard me crying I don't know why I thought I was being stealthy I really did I thought I was being stealthy but I was not and he sat with me for a while and then he asked me what was wrong and <laughs> It was just like, I don't even know how the fuck I answer that question. And eventually the thing that I said was that it feels like everything is broken and like, like it will never be put back together again. And yeah, just, yes, it's a feeling of like hopelessness. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I'm laughing at that. It's not funny. But then today at work, I was reminded of the thing that makes me like care about my job the thing that I love most about my job isn't like the anything about how my job is done I mean there are lots of things about how my job is done that are fun and neat and that I do enjoy I enjoy doing it but like far and away the thing that I care most about with my job is that I think that we are making things that are valuable like I think we are making things that are ultimately good for people like genuinely good in this way that I don't feel the need to justify even like I can say like yep yeah, this is a net good like I, th I think there's a net good impact here I think certainly there are things we can do better there are always things that can be done better but I think that even you know whatever it's even without doing all of the things that we could be doing to be better like it's it's still it's a net good and I just had this moment thinking about that being reminded of that like coming off of you know not getting any sleep because I was crying about how sad and broken everything feels. Uh, like the timing of that reminder was very good. So I got home and I sat down to record this video. That's, that's like, I don't know how we got to here. I think the point of doing this to the degree that it can be said that I have a point and I'm not sure that I do. It is self-justifying me recording this because when I am not talking about it, it, becomes very hard for me to talk about anything else because it's the only thing that I can think about but also I can't talk about it because it's like hard and painful and confusing and so I just sort of get into this weird loop uh where I become very very silent uh years ago when I was coming out of a like previous bad spell I wrote a whole blog post about this that I think I will link in the description there's just gonna be links to other things that are clearer and uh more coherent than this thing is. I personally derive a great deal of value from taking the time to remind to myself that I like can say things. That sounds so ridiculous when I say it out loud, but I don't know any better way to express the idea. <laughs> Making myself say like, here's where I'm at <laughs> uh, and like, acknowledging that I can do that. So in that like clouds parting moment of like, hey, here's some things that you like love about your job. 
uh, I mean, you're, like the thing that you love most about your job. Remember that thing? Hold on to that because not everything is broken. <laughs> not everything is broken. And I don't know. I think that was it. I think I needed to sit down and tell myself that not everything is broken. And it's hard to say that when I'm not like readily admitting that things are broken in the first place, you know, it's, it's like a whole whole thing there. I feel very weird sitting here with my uh, ring light and trying not to cry. The one last thing that I do want to say, and not just because it's, you know, more uplifting than everything else, honest, honest and truly, the doing of this thing is hard when things are bad uh, because it like it's hard to envision any sort of degree to which it matters. And so getting to a place where I can say that that I'm like speaking to anyone, even if that anyone that I'm speaking to is some ver future version of myself who will look at this and say thank you for like, you know, whatever happened between where I am now and like wherever my future self is, like there is, there is something inherently optimistic about it. And, and it's, it for me is an act of like leaning into that like minutely optimistic impulse and like running with it in part because it becomes self-perpetuating to do that it, it then it's a I don't know hope that begets more hope so anyway thank you for listening to all of this thank you to all of my friends and all of the wonderful people who I have in my life I am very very grateful for you uh, <laughs> this was weird. <laughs> I want to go eat dinner now. I haven't done that. I just came home and started recording this fucking video. I'm so hungry. Okay, bye.